Hello, how's it going? Going good, how are you? Yeah, pretty good, pretty good, getting there, yeah. That's awesome, that's awesome. Um, so yeah, uh, Wolf Garden, I watched it the other day and absolutely loved it. Um, I loved that it wasn't like the typical like jump scare type of horror thriller, so... Great. No, I'm glad, glad to hear it. We were trying to go for something uh, a bit different, you know, it's kind of, uh, obviously the werewolf movie, you always kind of think it's going to be a monster, <clears throat> a monster movie, but it's, uh, we, we tried to take it down a bit of a different route, sort of more psychological suspense. Um, so yeah, it was sort of a hybrid of uh, a few of my sort of favourite movies, you know, American Wolf in London meets with a sort of vertigo slash The Shining sort of a vibe to it. Is what we were aiming for anyway i i definitely prefer that that type um so you are the the writer the director and the the lead in this movie um yeah. <laughs> was that the original plan was to do all of that um to be honest it's kind of like a needs must kind of a situation really because you know we, it was a low budget film and um you know i was i was always uh i was i've always been an actor first and foremost and i started directing in you know in the last few years so i mean i i don't think i ever intended to do as much as what i had to do in the end um because <laughs> you know there was a lot a lot of things had to be done and uh you, you know on the especially you know, when we were actually filming it, we had a lot of uh, setbacks and, the, you know, the COVID situation happened. And, I, you know, I think you go through a lot when you're sort of making uh, your first debut feature film, but then obviously with the backdrop of, of uh, COVID and, uh, you know, it was just, uh, it made it 10 times more difficult, I think. So um, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily recommend, <laughs> I wouldn't recommend it a hundred percent but there's there's definitely ways around doing it and i think you know for for the next one i've i've got a sort of system in place in my head of how how to do things how to do things in future that's that's definitely good um so in in reference to covid um were you shooting and then the pandemic happened or like where were you at when when everything kind of shut down well we actually um we actually shot the film january last year so it was kind of you know it was it, it was still it was still around but it was kind of um you know it's, it's still enough to sh uh to shut a, a movie down kind of thing and uh for various reasons um so you know we, we had to be very very cautious and we did get cases on set so there was always you know there was always this sort of i guess the real nervous tension um of, of every day sort of you know will someone get it will I get it because obviously um you know taking that COVID test every day sort of like a lot of pressure each morning sort of waking up and I have to take that and you know if I got it then it would have been kind of uh game over for us <laughs> it was kind of like everything you know we, we did we did lose um a few people at different times and we had to sort of it's a constant process of replacing people and sort of we, we shut down a little bit as well um but yeah, so no, it, it the, the film itself was actually born out of lockdown kind of thing, because I had another film that was about to shoot when lockdown, uh, you know, when lockdown started. So mm. uh, this film was sort of a, 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 a rethinking kind of thing. It was born out of, uh, you know, what could we do shooting sort of as a one location, more of a one location and around what was going on in the world at the time, I guess. Interesting. Um... So where where did the the like uh, horror thriller werewolf idea kind of come from? Um, well, I think it's kind of it was always the thing about you know trying to shoot it you know wanting to do a sort of a, a minimalist film sort of more of a you know a, even a sort of character study thing and making it more about sort of keeping it one location and, and working around that and what can you do. You know, on a low budget, what can you do to make it interesting, to make it different? Um, and I, I suppose it, as, as a as a sort of debut film, a debut director kind of thing, you, you kind of just think, what what can you do with what you've got to make it that little bit different from the rest? So um, you know, I, I toyed with a lot of different ideas um, at the time. It was kind of like there was 
lots of ideas floating around and I just kind of thought you know I've always wanted to do a werewolf movie it's always you know horrors I've, I do love horror it's always been sort of um, you know my first short film I did was a horror it was a, a well more of a zombie type thing but it's um yeah I've, I've always just kind of thought you know it'd be nice to do try and do a werewolf movie but something just a little bit different like a, you know more of a romantic tragedy which is what this kind of turned into and um and it was i mean it was i think it was really because because the situation was so difficult the climate uh, you know in the world was was so challenging to try and make a film it you know we, we kept sort of there was several times we almost made it and then we had to say oh you know it's, it's too risky and all this so it you know it's always making this decision is it is it a good time to do it now and um you know the bonus of that was was that it gave me a lot of time to go back and redraft and rework it and just sort of take some more inspiration from places. So really it was, you know, it was a, it was a long process. I mean, it was, you know, sort of two years, two years from sort of uh, pre uh, well, having the idea to, to sort of, uh, you know, getting, get to where it is, well, it's more than two and a half years actually, but it's just kind of like, it's been a long process, but the idea sort of gradually developed to sort of a, a lone man, why is he there? And, and, you know, what would you do in that situation? It's just sort of asking that human question of, of uh, if this, you know, if this, if this happened to you, how would you deal with it? What, what would you, what would your mindset be, and how would your mind crumble? Gotcha. Yeah. Um. And because of of all of this, uh, you have quite a few scenes by yourself. Um, so, what was it like? Because uh, I'm picturing you being completely alone when you're you're like directing yourself and like acting in front of the camera. So like, were like how big was your crew and what was it like filming with by yourself? <laughs> well, do you know what it was kind of like? I mean, it was uh, the first week of shooting. It was just literally it was me on my own. It's sort of the, you know um, our lead actress Sean came in. Um, on the second week and then we had the stuff with the visitors sort of on the third week mm. and um, so I guess it was kind of it was it, it was kind of a good way of doing it because you kind of you know it's, it gives you that time to sort of settle into it and stuff and um, you know there's some of the outdoor scenes and sort of you know the more sort of walking in the woods and stuff like that it was a bit more straightforward and and um, yeah I mean our, our crew was we had a, a relatively small crew I think we had sort of something like 12 to 15 uh, crew depending on days and stuff like that um and I, I just think with all of it, it because as I say we had issues sort of it, uh, issues all the way through with sort of getting you know with the COVID thing and it was you know like I think it's just you get a lot of the standard things sort of replace having to replace people uh location stuff and and you know just little things going wrong and um I think really if we'd have done a comedy I'd have been in trouble because uh, the the one good thing about this film is that the guy is sort of uh, he's had, well the character's having kind of a nervous breakdown, which is kind of where I was at at some point. So it was just kind of like it wasn't too much of a stretch to sort of uh, to get to that place. I think if I was trying to be happy and like making jokes every day, it would have been very different. But also the fact as well, sort of that thing of me sort of having to keep myself sort of away from everyone is that that risk of you know anyone getting COVID of me getting COVID I'd sort of not saying I wasn't I was with the crew but it was there was a you know there's kind of a process in place and I guess that helps get you into that isolated mind frame as well. Well that makes sense for sure. Um so in working with Sean um what was it what was it like working with her in in this environment and what kind of made her the perfect Chantal? Well, I mean, no, it's, it, I mean, she was great to work with. I, I've, I've said it before about Sean. She just kind of, um, you know, it, it's like the importance of casting the right actors, really. You see, you, you've got someone who, who comes in and they can deliver. And, you know, she got the character. And, um, you know, the emotional stuff, I mean, yeah, it's, it's not an easy thing to do. I mean, we had a lot of stuff in there, the, the sort of some of the scenes we see very sort of nice, natural, sort of sweet scenes, the romantic scenes between the two of them where it's kind of a nice chemistry going on. But then you sort of jump into these other bits which are a lot more traumatic. Um, yeah, and, and you know, Sean was, Sean was really great at all that stuff. And it was, you know, it was, it was great to have her on board. And, and as I said, it, it's kind of like, um, you know, the way, the way things worked out, I, I was very, very happy 
with with the cast I had with my my two other actors in and the voice actors as well it you know I, and I think that's that's a lot of the battle won really when you if you can have you know you get great performances out of people and you don't have to push it you just got people who who know how to mm. who, know, who just know how to handle it who can just bring it you know bring it to the table and it's not you don't have to you can just you know especially as an actor director you rehearse before and then it, it just happens on set you don't have to to yeah to do too much more that's awesome yeah um when i was watching this i i liked how all of the dialogue had a perfect had a purpose and like all of the acting just like made everything just seem more important almost if that makes any sense um but the one line that like just like has stuck with me is uh what the when the visitor says that um alone time is good for the soul but too much can uh lead you down a dark path um i guess uh like that just to me just seems like not like the thesis of the film but like super important and i was just wondering like am i putting too much weight onto this line no not at all i, I mean i, I think I mean, and this is the great thing about Grant is the is the level of gravitas he brings to to the dialogue and the and the scenes he's got in it. I mean, uh, he's just such a great sort of antagonist. You know, he, he's he's just he just brings that energy to it. And um, you know, it, it was like that, that that line you mentioned is actually in the in the trailer, and it's kind of like you could pick any one of about fifteen or twenty lines that he says because he just has such a great voice and it's kind of like you know it just it, it's just what you want for you you know you sort of hear that and you think oh that would be great in the trailer because it's just you get these these uh, great little sound bites and you know and he did, he had a lot of them so um, and you know as as a writer you know having written the script it's kind of when you have someone bring that dialogue. Uh, to life like that and you know it makes it kind of I think it makes you look better because you've got someone who, who makes it sound so good you just kind of think oh I wrote that that's uh, you know that's <laughs> I didn't it didn't sound like that quite like that in my head but I'm very happy that it sounds like that when he's saying it so um, you know that was a, a a great thing there so yeah and I, I think the thing is that uh, he does kind of he is kind of like the narrator of the piece in in some ways in that you know he, he comes along and he he knows he knows what's going on, you know, he's kind of, he's, as, as we see William losing his mind, we, this guy, you know, without giving too much away, he sort of turns up and, uh, you know, he's, he's quite clued up, although the revelation, hmm. you know, it can't be, it can't be too much, uh, uh, you know, it's, it's almost drip fed in, in some ways in, in, you know, what can this guy actually handle? Because uh, yeah, as I said, I've got to be careful what I say. I mean, this is one of the things as well as like getting used to uh, interviews. It's kind of like, oh, oh, no, not not dropping in any spoilers anywhere. I thought I almost did it the other day, and I was like, ah, no, mustn't, mustn't say too much. Um, but yeah, no, it's uh, no, I, I think absolutely that line. Um, yeah, that's it's it's kind of the the line I chose for the trailer. So yeah, it's it's quite a significant line. So it's kind of a long answer, but yeah. <laughs> no, thank you for it. Um, yeah, like I said, it just like once I heard it, like I like rewound the the movie a little bit so I could hear it again, and it just it's just stuck with me since I watched it. So, um, why did you choose Wolf uh, Wolf Garden as the title? Um, I think it's just I mean, for me, I've never been. I always kind of have trouble coming up with a good title. It's kind of a lot of my my films have, well, sorry, my scripts, I should say, have uh, you know working titles. And then when so someday something just pops into my head and it clicks and uh, I like the sound of it and it works. I think Wolf Garden, you know, because obviously there are, there are certain scenes in the film, it, you know, it is, it is based around the garden and the cottage and the, you know, the, the wolf. So mm -hmm. it kind of just, it, it kind of, you know, it, stuck, it seemed to stick together and it seems like an interesting name, hopefully an interesting name for a film that's kind of a bit memorable. Work, but I hope, I mean, it kind of, when I when I thought of it, I just kind of thought, yeah, that's that's the one. And um, yeah. I like it. And that's probably, yeah, that's probably as deep as it gets. But yeah, I think it's just kind of like, it just, it's just one of those things. I think uh, you find the name and it, it fits and it kind of works with, with, the, with the vibe of the film. Nice, yeah. 
I I always like it when things kind of like smoothly come together like that. Absolutely, yeah. You get this, there's always as well. It's um, I'm filming filming this. Is you know we like to claim credit for sort of all all the sort of nice little visual motifs and the you know the the foreshadowing that happens in it but you know a, a couple of them were lucky <laughs> so it's kind of like you know it's just sometimes it's, it's a lucky coincidence even you know getting the shed that was that was another one I mean we had a location fall through and we had a big barn and I was trudging around in the mud in the raining weather and looking at even stables and and then we found this shed and it was just kind of like it was an absolute miracle four days before filming that we that I found like you know, we we couldn't have built a better shed than than what we've got. So um, yeah, that was a that was a out of out of some misfortune and a lot of stress. It kind of uh, you know it's uh, it was amazing we got that. That's great. Um, what is something that you are just so excited for the audience to see when they watch the movie? Um, I think really. I, I, I don't know about if there's any one thing in particular, <clears throat> but I would say probably it's just the fact, you know, it's, it's the piece as a whole, I guess, is I'm, I'm really just interested to see what people take from it. And I think with something like this, because it's, it's not straightforward, you know, it's not a linear storyline, you know, it's very nonlinear, it's very fragmented, and there's a lot of sort of jumping around of what reality is kind of thing. And, you know, from the few people that have seen it, I'm always just fascinated to sort of find out what they got from it because the one thing about you know having you know I've, I've wrote it and I've you know in the editing process I've seen it far too many times and I've always known I've always known what happens you know I've always known sort of what's going on so it's always so fascinating to me what people there's always something different that someone gets from it and that's always so interesting to hear sometimes you just you know there's a couple of times I mean I kind of always think oh I've probably thought of every angle but then someone says oh I thought this about this and I was like ah oh, okay that's um that's interesting because there are you know I, I think it's the idea was always that thing about you sort of interpret it you know is this are we is what we're seeing always real and uh, you know the, the, just the different ways you can read into it and I think that's probably the thing I guess it's just and, and you can make your own mind up about you know when by the time it's finished you can make your own mind up about what is real and what isn't if any you know if, even if any of it was or you know what what it could be a metaphor for for you nice yeah i i just kind of tried to put myself in william's shoes a little bit of like i don't know what's going on and like i don't know what like what's real and what's not kind of with the with the the line that i picked out earlier just kind of leading down a dark path of just almost insanity so um great no I'm glad you like it. yeah so what's next for you have you started anything anything else um well yeah that, i mean there's there's a couple of projects it's kind of like um you know it's, it's just that, that process of sort of development at the moment so it's always that thing uh with, with, with any of these films is always the financing side of things it's getting that you know getting things moving and stuff um but i have a, it's actually another horror film funnily enough the one that almost happened before lockdown so there's still that now again with that one there's been there's been time for me to rewrite that and work on that and uh, you know get it better and there's another one that's sort of more of a drama a comedy drama so um you know there's, there's that thing about obviously it could be it could follow on more naturally to do another horror film but also there's the other the other side of things is that, you know, I, to, to not always do horror, to be seen, to be doing some other stuff as well. I mean, I'd like to, I always want to go and make this, this film that didn't happen. That's, you know, it's very important to me to do that. Um, but as I say, to branch out into comedy, well, to, it's more drama really, but um, yeah. So it's either of those two projects is it's, they're there and ready to go. And it's just kind of a, a case of finding the right fit and, uh, you know, hopefully getting that, getting that going this year, maybe with, with this film hopefully taking off we might you know that might generate some more interest and we can get the both shot this year so you never know it's yeah. always a, a funny old game for sure um 
if people want to follow you and kind of stay up to date with where those projects are at, um, are you on social media? How can we, how can we stay connected? Yeah. Um, I mean, we've got, a, uh, we've got the lightning strike pictures website, uh, on social media, we're on, uh, Instagram, like Wolf, Wolf Garden film, uh, it's Wolf Garden feature film, uh, is on Instagram as, as is lightning strike pictures. And it's the same on, uh, same on Facebook as well. We've got a page for, for Wolf Garden as well. So, um, yeah, we're sort of constantly updating things and, um, as I say, hopefully there'll be more more to share soon. I'm I'm very, despite many many of the issues we had and like the you know the the pressures to get it to where it is now. It's um you know I I do it all again tomorrow. It's uh you know it's it's where it's at for me. So uh, yeah, just uh, just dying to get on the film set and make a make something new. Awesome. Great. Um, well, thank you so much for chatting with me. Um, again, I love the movie and I'm going to go follow you so I can stay up to date with, with your next stuff. Thank you so much. No, thank you for taking the time to chat to me. So it's great to help. Uh, thank you for helping the film. Of course. Of course. All right. <laughs> Thanks a lot. <laughs>